Hey guys, Keith from InTech, and we're here today to take a look at the Flyer Explorer. So Explore is our smallest of the toy haulers. We have the Explore and the Discover. Um, neat things about the Explore, it's gonna maintain a little bit lower head height, so it's, it's gonna be fairly aerodynamic pulling with your smaller vehicles. Uh, still gonna have the ability to have your tip outs inside it and give you a lot of space for kind of a compact small camper. Your weight on this one on the upper end is gonna be just at about 2,000 pounds. Um, that depends how you option it. You remove some of the options, you can get down to about the 1,500 pound range, um, depending on the equipment you put on the unit. But with all that said, what really sets the Explorer apart, like all the other Intec products, is the construction. So let's take a look. All right, so this is what's gonna set Intec apart from anything else you're gonna look at out there. This is an all aluminum chassis, completely built and welded in-house by Intec. And then on top of that, you're gonna see our welded cage frame. So as opposed to how most RVs are built, where you have separate walls and roofs that are either screwed or stapled together, trying to twist free from one another while going down the road, this is a solid aluminum structure completely welded together. And this is how every Intech starts before it gets built down our production line. So back here on the exterior of the unit, you're gonna see like all Flyer product, this is all aluminum skinned exterior. So the way we do this is you won't see any screws or rivets on the outside because we're going to take VHB tape and place it on the aluminum cage that you just saw. And then we're going to hang this wall to that of VHB tape. So it gives you a very clean exterior look to the flyer. Up on the front of the Explore, you're going to see a nice large tongue box. So this will give you good storage here for front items. Um, this one currently has the LP tank mounted. And what this is part of is this is what goes with our exterior kitchen, which is an option on the Explore. So if you bought the Explorer Standard, you'd have no kitchen. You can either option on the kitchen or this particular unit we're looking at here has what we call the adventure package. And what that gets you is the exterior slide out kitchen. It's gonna get you your off-road tires or your more rugged uh, tires and wheels. And then it's gonna get you a roof rack and the AC. So that'll be pretty common on most of your flyer orders to have the adventure package. You can a la carte those items though if you want. As we come around the side and take a look at this exterior kitchen, it's gonna have a safety latch. You'll see a sign down here for it. So what you do is this little latch on the bottom, you pull it down and you flip it 180 degrees and then it'll stay in the open position. Now your kitchen will slide open. And this is a pretty slick little design because it's got everything built in that you need. Um, it's got a little table here that pops off the side and this is gonna give you an L-shaped kitchen to use here. And you see we already have this LP tank mounted and I'll explain that in a minute because you can either mount that or you can use one pound bottles. But either way, your table still works. It goes right over the top of it. Now you're gonna see you're gonna have a uh, 45 quart refrigerator on board. This is gonna be with a compressor. So no matter what the temperature is outside, you can set your temperature here and you'll be able to maintain that with no problem. That'll run off your 120 volt or your 12 volt system. So even if you're not plugged into shore power, you can still run this off your battery. Next to that, you're gonna have a two burner stove. So cooktop, we do use the uh, cover that has the wings on the side to help protect any wind coming out and taking off your flame on the sides. And then down below there, you'll have a little storage cabinet area where you can put pots and pans and then you see where you hook up your LP, and that's this location right here. All right, so the LP system can be hooked up a couple of different ways. We equip you with this LP line right here, and this is designed to go into your 20 pound tank on the side here, and then this hooks in right underneath the cooktop. The other thing you can do, which is fairly convenient, is you pop off this fitting here on the end. This will now hook into a one pound LP bottle. So just the little disposables that you can buy at a camp store or at Walmart, hook in right there on the bottom and uh, makes it pretty simple to use considering the LPs only run in this cooktop. And with a one pound bottle, you should probably be able to do an entire weekend off of that. All right, so then when you're done with the kitchen to put it away, it simply just slides back in. Oh, you gotta make sure your safety latch is out of the way there for it to close all the way and then you wanna re-engage your safety latch. So that way when it's going down the road, that can't pop open, even if these little door latches let loose. A few other things I didn't touch on when that was open, you do have two outlets right here above and a light. So these are kind of convenient with having your tabletop there, plug coffee pot, blender, anything like that, and you got a location to set it. Coming further around to the side on the Explore, 
Um, this unit is set up when we go to the other side, you'll see a single tip out. And when you do a single tip out, the, uh, the curb side of the unit here will have an entry door. You'll also see your spare tire and a window here. If this was optioned with two tip outs, you would then lose the entry door, the spare tire would move to the front of the camper, and this would become a large tip out bed here on the side. In doing that, losing your entry door, we have to put double doors on the rear. So as we make it to the back, I'll explain that a little bit further. On the side here, you're gonna see a little step. This step is part of the frame structure. So if you're doing something with the awning or up on the roof rack, you can jump up on here to access it. Um, as you look up top and see the roof rack there, that is a nice setup that's got crossbars that are completely adjustable. It is rated at 250 pounds. It is a separate option, or as I mentioned, if you do the adventure package, it's included in it. Um, some people use rooftop tents on top of these. It gets a little high with the Explore, more common on the Pursue and the Chase. Uh, the roof rack also gives us the ability to add this awning. So the awning is a separate option. It's a 270 degree awning and it actually opens up to the front of the camper. And the purpose behind that is then when our kitchen's open, we're now covering our kitchen and prep space on the front end. Coming around to the back, you'll see standard, we set this up with a ramp door on the back end. And here's where I was mentioning, if you had done the double tip outs, one on each side, these would be two barn doors because this would end up being your egress point to get in and out. If a customer doesn't want the ramp though, because they want to just, they're not using it as a toy hauler, you can also option in the double, uh, the double rear doors for no additional cost. All right, a couple other notable things on the back. You do have a loading light here in the back. So there's a switch right on the inside to turn that on. Lights up the back end very well. You also have a two inch receiver. So this receiver right here is set up to hold 175 pounds. So it will be able to hold bike racks, um, even handle most heavier bikes like e-bikes with that kind of rating. Here's a tip out that's currently deployed. So this one's opened up right now. Um, when this closes in, if you look on the inside of the unit, you only take up about eight to 10 inches of space with the tip out when it's closed in. So it's not eating up very much interior space, but it gives you a great spot for when you're camping to sleep outside, not eat into the space of the unit. There are some instructions you'll find in here on how to prep the canvas. So there is a you know, wetting it down, letting the uh, stitches swell the first time to make sure that it's all sealed off and then you don't have any future leaks with it. Up here towards the front of the camper, you're gonna have your battery box. So this opens up, this is a lockable box too. So in case you have high dollar batteries in here, you're good to go. Um, it's gonna come with a single box that's set up for a lead acid battery. You're also gonna see your battery on off switch located to the side there. Uh, it's a great switch, kick that off when you're done camping. You don't worry about pulling any more juice. Up across the top here, this is the vent that's feeding into that battery box. Um, you're gonna have your 30 amp shore cord plug-in station right here. You're gonna have your coax cable. So on the inside of this camper, there's no TV, but what we do is we run a coax cable through and put another outlet on the inside. So if you add a TV and you wanna hook an antenna in, you can do that. The antenna you see here is just strictly for AM, FM. So without some sort of booster, you're not gonna get much on your TV without including an antenna in there. Uh, this is gonna be your ZAMP plug-in, and this is wired directly to the battery. So if you got a portable ZAMP panel, you're all set to go by just plugging in right there. Up here, you're gonna see a vent, and there'll be another one in the back. This is for the toy hauler portion of this unit. That way, if you have something with a gas engine in it or a gas can, you wanna keep things ventilated, you actually pull those from the inside and you can let air pass through so that you don't have any buildup of fumes on the interior. All right, so back on the back end of the unit again, here's the ramp door we were talking about. So this just has a couple of latches to pop open. These are lockable. And then you can drop down this door. It is spring assisted, so nice and lightweight. It does have a 2,200 pound uh, capacity to the door itself though. As we come up inside, again, we mentioned the Explorer by design has a much lower head height. It's only about five and a half feet tall. Uh, purpose being, if you're hauling this, and it's a fairly lightweight camper, so if you want to haul this with a Jeep or a smaller SUV, you're not going to get a ton of wind resistance if we made it super tall. Stepping inside, here we have the tip out already deployed. So this gives you a 48 by 80 inch bed, uh, pretty good size. On the other side of the camper then, you're going to see we're going to have a window and a door for entry. 
Again, if you did the second tip out, you would look at this exact same setup on the opposite side of the camper. As we move towards the front of the unit, you'll see a nice uh, cabinetry area up front. The slide out kitchen is actually what's sliding underneath that. So if you didn't option in the slide out kitchen, you'd have a couple of cabinet doors right here to have access underneath the cabinet. But then when you have the kitchen, those go away and now you just have a nice countertop there and some cubby storage up above. Two speakers inside here with a sound system. Of course, you can Bluetooth into that or plug directly in with your phone. Uh, we do have a 35 amp uh, converter down below and that is set up to be able to change over to lithium. So right now it's set towards lead acid, but you'll see a sign on there that shows you how you could switch that over to lithium if you wanted to upgrade to lithium batteries on board the Explore here. All right, so as we look around the inside of the Explore, like our other Flyer products, you're gonna see carpeted walls and ceiling. And this is by design, because somebody that's buying a Flyer product is usually gonna have some serious modifications they wanna do. This is their blank slate. This, is their, this allows them to add on and make it be what they need it to be. So we'll use a 3 8 plywood wall. We'll put carpet over it for the wall and ceiling. And then this way, if you wanna add you know, uh, any other racks, if you wanna add some gun holders, some fishing hook holders, fishing line holders, you can do anything you want on the inside of this. Screw in a TV mount, it's all available for you to do that. And then if you have to back screw out and change the location by just kind of fluffing around on the carpet there, you will hardly even see where you put the original uh, attachment point there. The floor on it is gonna be made of three quarter inch plywood. So you're gonna have a nice thick, heavy floor, but then you're gonna see these D rings here that are rated at 500 pounds a piece. So if you're attaching dirt bikes, motorcycles, four wheelers, they all hook in here, no problem. Uh, for ventilation, you're gonna see we use a max air fan and we use the one that is set up to run in the rain. So this has a hood that opens up and allows it to breathe and pull air in from the bottom of that hood. Also, it's got a remote on board that'll let you set a temperature. So you can set all the speeds on the fan, but also it's got a thermostat built in. So if you want to try and set the temperature and then the fan would either kick air out or pull air in depending on what it's trying to accomplish. Of course, it can only do so much depending on what the exterior temperature is. Also on this side of the Explorer, you'll see you got your light switches. So here you're going to have a little accent light to light up up in the front uh, cabinet area. So if you want a softer light and not in just the overheads, you can do that. You're also going to have your dome lights for overhead. And then you're going to have your porch lights that are over here on the curbside of the camper, one by your kitchen and one by the entry door here. Up above that, we're gonna have our AC unit. The AC is uh, 11,000 BTU, which is plenty for this little camper. Um, it also have a, has a 5,000 BTU heat strip on board. All the controls are located on the AC itself, and then you got vents that you can adjust depending on where you're trying to move the air to. All right, so that was a quick look at the Flyer Explorer. Thanks for watching.